everyone and welcome to CTR, where our mission is to connect people with horses who wouldn't otherwise have the chance. And since we can't be together this summer, we are going to bring virtual horsepower learning to you. Welcome back. We are in episode number two. Today at CTR, this episode is brought to you by Victor. Victor is a 19-year-old chestnut quarter horse, and today he's going to help us learn about anatomy and grooming. getting for this episode. This is our good friend Victor modeling all the parts of the horse and he's going to be a really good sport today as we stick parts of the horse tags all over him. So it's really important to learn the, the vocabulary and the different parts of the horse as we get deeper into learning about horsemanship and taking care of horses because we refer back to these parts of the horse very often and we'll refer to them later when we get to groom Victor. So I would like you to try filling out this worksheet before we give you the answers. You might know some of these already or you can get your big person to help you, but you're going to put the number that's pointing, there's arrows and numbers pointing to different parts of the horse on this worksheet. You're gonna put the corresponding number next to each part of the horse. All right, so I'm not gonna go in any particular order, but I will reveal the answers as we move along. All right, so number 17 was the barrel. And his big belly right here, that's shaped like a barrel, it's called the barrel. This is right over top of his ribs. And number 23 is the hip. He has one on each side, just like you and me. And you can kind of see the point of the hip sticks out just a little bit right here. The back, number 24, he has a back just like you and me, and this is where we would put the saddle if we were going to ride Victor. It's right up here. And the hoof is number 14. He has four of them, and we're going to count them together. One, two, three, four. I'm not sure how well this will stick to his hoof, but we will try. Good boy, Victor. All right, number five is the muzzle. We'll see how he feels about this one. So their muzzle is so soft. It's one of my favorite things to pet. And you can see that he has very long, wiry whiskers on his muzzle. And those are really important. It's important that we don't shave those off because that is how he feels his way around the pasture at night and senses his surroundings. So, let's put that right on his nose. <laughs> and right near the, the muzzle is the nostril, number four on your worksheet. We're gonna, let's kind of, he has two nostril holes just like us, and I'm gonna put it right there. Good boy, Victor. <laughs> he might not leave that one on. Number 15 was the elbow. We have two elbows and a horse has two elbows. Kind of in the same spot as we would expect it to be on a human. Right back here. Number 16 was the girth. So the girth area is right here. And if you're familiar with riding horses, the girth is something 
as a piece of equipment that we use as well to attach the saddle onto the horse. So the girth area is right there on both sides. Number 19 is the pass turn, and that is a part of their lower leg, right here on all four legs. Let's see, keep that on. And number 20 is the hock. And he has one of these on each hind leg. Their hocks are right here. That's a harder one that you may not have known before now. Number 22 is the croup. Now this is how I always remember this one. Croup rhymes with poop. And the croup is on the back end of the horse. Right there, right at the top of his rump. And if you remember from the previous episode, horses poop up to 50 pounds per day. That's a lot of poop. Number one was the ears. He has two ears, just like you and me. And just like you and me, he uses them to listen. But more than that, the horse's ears are really important in telling us and communicating with us how he or she is feeling. So if you look at Victor's ears right now, you can see they're kind of gently turning back and forth. He's listening to what I'm doing. Maybe a little annoyed at me for putting these stickers all over him, but he's otherwise quite relaxed. Now, if his ears were pricked, you might have seen earlier, he was looking out the window. Their ears are straightforward like that. They're alert, they're looking at something. If their ears are straight back to their head, that is a sign that the horse is not happy. They are quite angry and we wanna make sure we take that cue from them. So we're gonna put this on his ears. You can see he is very tolerant. Good boy, Victor. Number six is the jaw. Horses' teeth go all the way up, pretty much to here on their jaw. Number 13 is the knee. We have two knees. Victor has two knees. Number 12 is the chest. His chest is right here. You can really feel through here how powerful horse's muscles are. And close to the chest is the shoulder. Number 11, he has a shoulder on each side. You can kind of see it, it's defined right here. Number seven is the throat. <laughs> which is gonna be right here. Number 18 is the chestnut. Now I know on your worksheet, you can't see the chestnut on Victor's front feet, but we can see it on his hind legs. They have four of them. It's sort of this crusty little piece here that are left over from evolution from when the horse was three-toed. They really serve no purpose anymore. They just continuously grow and then they fall off usually on their own. So that is his chestnut. Number 21 is the tail. Now a safety issue when we're working with horses, he has one stuck in his tail now. A safety issue when we're working with horses is that we never walk behind the horse. The horse cannot see us back there. And as you can see, he was kicking at the piece of paper that I just put on his, on his uh, chestnut. So they could accidentally kick us if we ever walk behind them. So the tail is right here, and the tail is super important. We never cut the tail, we barely brush the tail, because they need that tail as a defense to all the flies out in the field. Number eight is the withers. And we talked about the withers when we measured how tall Dreamer was, if you remember from last, the last episode. And the withers are right here. It's this defined bump right at the base of the horse's neck. Number 10 is the mane. Lions have manes. We kind of have manes. This is Victor's mane right here. 
And number nine is his neck. They have very powerful necks. Lots of muscle in there. Number two is the forelock. The way that I remember this is the forelock is located on their forehead and it's a lock of hair. So his forelock is this little tuft of hair right here. That's his forelock. And this one is the last one. Now I'm not gonna actually stick this on his eye, but horses have the biggest eye of any mammal and they can almost see 360 degrees around their body. They just have that blind spot behind them that we talked about, but they also have a blind spot right in front of them. So it's another reason, safety-wise, we never approach the horse straight on. We always want to approach them from the side so that they can see us coming. They have very good eyesight. We'll just put it right there. As you can see, our horses are such good sports. Ready? We love it, Victor. All right, we interrupt this program to bring you some more bad, bad jokes. jokes. Hey! <laughs> what do you call a grumpy cow? I don't know. Moody. <laughs> talking about grooming with Victor and we groom the horses because one we want them to be clean we want to take care of our horses the same way that we have to take care of our other pets or ourselves but it's also beneficial to the horses because it helps spread oils over their skins it helps get their blood flow circulating to their skin and it's relaxing which is also a benefit for us now when you're grooming we have to know what brushes to use how to use them so it helps teach sequencing and responsibility. And it's something that you would do probably right away when you meet a horse. You're gonna learn how to approach them, pet them, probably how to groom them. So we have two worksheets and handouts that we're gonna send you. One of them is a sequencing worksheet. So you're going to have to cut out with the help of an adult these different brushes and you're going to have to put them in order of how we use them. The other worksheet has some scrambled up letters that you're going to have to unscramble to figure out what the word is. So a little bit of spelling in there as well. So you can see in front of me that I have a couple different brush boxes. Now one of them says Victor, so we know that this one is Victor's. Now we use different brush boxes for our horses the same way that you would use a different toothbrush than your mom or dad or your sibling or anyone else. That brush is for you and that way we're not cross contaminating anything. So these are Victor's brushes. We have also Button's brush box and a brush box that we use for a special program that we call hippotherapy. So we're going to go over what the brushes are that we use how we use them, why we use them, all of that. We're gonna start with our curry comb. So our curry comb is typically a round rubber cone with little teeth on it. It's the first brush that we will use. This brush helps remove large chunks of dirt from the horse. When we use this brush, it's going to be used in a circular motion and you are going to use it on everything but the head 
and the legs of the horse. So to demonstrate, if I were to groom Victor with this brush, I'm gonna make little circles with it. I'm trying to loosen up any hair or dirt. Luckily, he's not very muddy, otherwise I'd be getting a lot of mud off of him as I was doing this. But I'm just loosening it up. So after I've used the curry comb, I'm going to use the hard brush. So there's some brushes here that look pretty similar. One of them has long bristles, one of them has short bristles, and they're going to feel different against your skin. So we want the one with the hard bristles to go first. The reason we want the hard bristles to go first is because everything you just loosened up on your horse, we want to now get off of the horse. So when you use a hard brush, it's a sweeping motion towards the tail, which is the direction that the fur grows. So the same way you wouldn't want someone brushing your hair the wrong way, the horses don't want their fur brushed the wrong way either. So this is gonna get everything that you just loosened up off the horse with its hard bristles. You can also use this on the cheek and jaw of the horse and on the horse's legs if you need to as well. After you've used this hard brush, the soft brush is used the same way. Now, the soft brush is going to dust off the horse. It's gonna spread the oils on the horse's fur, but it's the same exact motion. So sometimes you might have a very nice soft brush, a dandy brush, that'll make your horse even look a little bit shiny when you use it. So that's the brush that we would use third. After we've done that, there's some other brushes that we may want to use depending on the time of year or how thoroughly we're grooming our horses. So we're gonna go over those now real quick. So one of those brushes is a shedding blade. It is made of metal. It has little teeth on it. This one has teeth in two different sizes. We can use this or, I do not have one in front of me right now, but there's a block that does the same thing. Both of these help get long, loose hairs off of your horse. This is a brush that you wouldn't use unless you had an instructor there to help you because these have to be used around the skeletal system of the horse. So we talked about some of the main body locations when we were doing anatomy earlier, but this is gonna be a little more detailed to look at the shoulder, to look at the ribs, the hips, to make sure that when we use this and we pull off hair, that we're keeping the horse comfortable and happy as we're grooming them. Another brush that we have looks like the hard brush and the soft brush, but it's very small. So this small brush is a face brush. This is gonna be more convenient to use than a hard or soft brush to get around your horse's ears or around their eyes. Cause we don't wanna brush our horse in the eyeball, just like you wouldn't wanna be poked in the eyeball. <sighs> we have a special hairbrush that we would use for our horses. Now, Miss Megan talked about earlier how we do not brush the horse's tail. We, if we brush the horse's tail, we can break apart the hair, but in our horse's mane, they don't have nerve endings here. So as you brush it, you can't hurt them and you get to make them look all pretty. You can also brush the forelock which they use to keep flies out of their eyes. So you, this is another area that we would not want to cut. No tail cutting, no forelock cutting. So just like you wanna brush your hair, it makes you look presentable if you're going to school. We wanna brush our horse's hair before they go into the schooling ring where we are now. This brush is important for an area that we often miss on horses. So when people are grooming, typically what they do is they groom where the saddle's gonna go on the horse's barrel and their girth, and they think, there, my horse is good enough to ride. This can be used in that area, but one of the convenient parts about this rubber mitt is that it's flexible. So this is an excellent thing to use on your horse's legs. So when we groom our horse's legs, we're trying to make sure that they don't have any oil or mud buildup from standing in their fields. So in the winter when they're standing in their fields and it's all muddy, they're gonna have very muddy legs when they come inside. We wanna help get that off of them. 
All right, so the last brush that I have is the hoof pick. So the hoof pick is what we're going to use to clean out their hooves. One side has a point and one side has bristles on it. So when we're cleaning their feet, I want you to think to yourself, would I want to walk around with a whole bunch of rocks in my shoes? No. No one wants to walk around with a whole bunch of rocks in their shoes. And neither do our horses. They don't want to carry you with something in their foot and go limping around the arena the whole time that you're riding. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we pick out a hoof. We're gonna talk about the parts of the hoof real quick since we did some anatomy earlier. But the first thing I want you to notice is how we've changed angles, all right? So whenever you're picking a horse's foot, you want to face the back of the horse. Whenever you're grooming a horse, you're aware of your feet, but especially when you're picking up their feet, you want to make sure that you're not in a zone where if there's a horse fly competing with that leg for, and you, if there's something that's going to startle your horse, you want to be out of the kicking zone. So I'm going to face the back. When I pick up the hoof, oh, we might, we'll have to use a back foot for anatomy. When I pick up the hoof, you can see that he has a shoe and he also has a mat here but I wanna clean if they have a shoe all around the shoe so that there is nothing stuck in there that could cause him any discomfort when you're riding him. We're gonna pick up a back foot to look at the parts of the hoof. So when I pick this out, I'm looking mainly to get these two divots here before I sweep anything else off these two divots. This is where you're gonna have the most rocks get stuck for your horse. All out here and over here is the toe of the horse. You still can clean it off, but there's not gonna get rocks stuck in there. So your horse isn't going to have as many issues in this area when it comes to rocks. This part in the middle, notice that I'm going to sweep it off. I'm not going to pick it off. This is called the frog. So the frog, I want you to think of like the pink part of your fingernail. It's sensitive. This is for shock absorption on your horse. So if you stuck this in there and pulled, it would really hurt. So that's part of the reason we want to get around it and not pick on it. I'm going to put it down without having him step on my toes. So that is how we would groom our horses before we're ready to ride. The same way that you need to get ready in the morning before you go to school, we want our horses looking and feeling good before they do any work. <laughs> Did you know that horses need to sometimes wear sunscreen? So the same way during the hot summer months when we go outside and we have to put on sunscreen so we don't get a burn and our skin doesn't get all gross and peely, some of our horses have these very light pink noses. So these horses with these pink noses, they look decently similar to us. So we want to make sure that we put sunscreen on our horses so that they don't get sunburn because they'll get peeling all around their nose the same way that we can get peeling on our skin. So when we get our sunscreen out, we have a little bottle here with us today. We'll use just about any sunscreen. But when we put it on our horses, we wanna make sure that we do it the same way we would for ourselves. We're gonna apply a good enough amount that it covers all of her nose, and especially for Miss Tilly here, all this lower pink part of her face that doesn't have a ton of fur on it. Once we put that on, we wanna let it set in for a minute, and then we'll let her back out into her field. So when I put on Tilly's sunscreen, I'm going to start with about this amount. When I reach for her face, I want to make sure that I don't scare her. We don't want to turn around and just start slathering stuff all over our horse's face. So we come in, I'm going to start with her nose all around her nostril. You want to rub it in the same way you would, and then up on all this light pink part of her face too. Get all the way around her nostril. 
Now some of our horses have darker colored noses, and for our horses with darker colored noses, they don't tend to get sunburned nearly as much as our horses with the light pink noses. So we don't worry about them quite as much in these hot summer months. And then we'd let it sit, and then she can go outside and play in the sun. All right, so that ends episode two. We hope you guys had fun with Victor today, learning about anatomy and grooming. You can visit us at ctrchanginglives.org, or you can like us on Facebook. We will see you next time.